Okay, good evening. Welcome to worship uh, this evening on this Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday, uh, the Thursday where we remember uh, Jesus' mandate uh, to love one another. Uh, thank you for joining us at home if you're watching on Facebook Live. Everything that you'll need for tonight's service will appear on the screen above my head if you're with us in person. If you're watching online, it will magically appear on your screen uh, at the appropriate times. Uh, we will be having communion as part of tonight's worship service. Uh, we are going back to our pre-pandemic uh, communion practices here at People of Hope, so we'll invite you to come forward to receive the bread and the wine uh, and that special blessing. Uh, if you're at home, you'll want to gather some uh, communion elements with you. And then we are, we'll also have our uh, hand-washing uh, ceremony as part of tonight's service as we remember uh, the time when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Uh, so those of you who are here, you're going to be invited to come up and, and uh, I'm going to wash your hands for you. Uh, if you're at home, uh, you can imagine my hands coming through your screen, which is kind of creepy, um, but you'll want to grab something so you can, so you can have, uh, so you can wash your hands or wash those, the hands of the people who are watching uh, worship with you uh, this evening as well. Uh, there will be a time of community prayers in our worship service tonight. So if you're uh, here present and would like a, uh, a prayer included in tonight's worship service, the purple prayer cards are in the back of the room. You can make your way to do that. I'd ask that you kind of do that uh, before the sermon. So you have about 20 minutes or so uh, uh, to fill out your prayer request so we can uh, make sure that they make their way up front. Uh, if you're at home, Again, thank you for joining us. You can type in your prayer request into the Facebook chat, and we'll make sure to include that as part of worship uh, this evening as well. Uh, I think that's all the words I have to begin our worship service tonight. So if you can go ahead and click to that next screen, I invite you to join in singing our song, You Are My All in All.
again uh, welcome uh, you for worship this evening. All those announcements that I said at the beginning of the service still apply. So we'll go ahead and go on to our, uh, our confessional song, uh, Holiness. Oops, yep, you're fine. A little, little logistical things. Okay. <laughs> that you please pray with me. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others as he was a servant to all. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask that you please join me in our confessional prayer. Let us pray together. God of all creation, you are great above all. You created everything. You are our breath and life. Give us ears to hear, even when it is difficult to hear or understand you. Forgive us for not listening to ourselves, for those around us, and most importantly to you. Help us forgive the ones we feel wronged by. Move us to be agents of change, unsatisfied with an unjust world. Remind us of your love again and again. Ignite us to be your loving and faithful presence in the world. For you are the ultimate giver of all good things. Amen.
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your, sons are, your sins are forgiven, and your sons. Almighty God, strengthen us with a power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. You are loved and you are forgiven. The Hebrew people, as you might remember, were trying to get out of Egypt. And Pharaoh was very hard-hearted. That's the phrase the Bible uses, hard-hearted. Our reading tonight picks up on what the Hebrew people didn't realize was the tenth and final plague. But that's what the story is about. From Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 4, and then 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you should eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Our next reading is from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 32. Paul writes and gives the citizens of Corinth the words of the institution that the disciples heard on this night, Monday, Thursday, a couple thousand years ago. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Our third reading tonight is from the book of John, chapter chapter 13, verses 1 to 17, and then picking up later at 31b through verse 35. John writes, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. 
having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not now know what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am only with you a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends the reading. Uh, where are my young member missionaries? Raise your hand if you're a young member missionary. Cooper and Hannah and... and Julie, come on. You guys can come up in this front seat, okay? So you guys aren't all that young, so this won't be all that challenging for you. But do you remember who this guy is? Do you, do you know his name? Ube, right? And why is his name Ube, do you remember? It's Right. Ube means purple, and there's a purple sweet potato that someone here in town makes into a purple donut. I still have yet to get one of those donuts. Hint, hint. Okay? So Ube and I were talking, like we always talk, which is kind of weird, but it's also really, really nice. And Ube asked me if there were, what it meant to love someone. And I had a hard time kind of answering that. I know I love people, but... I don't know if I gave him the answer he was looking for. So my question to you is, how do you love someone? How do you show someone that you love them? Yeah. You give them hugs? Yeah, Cooper. You, you say it and you give them kisses. Okay, Hannah. You treat them like you love them. And what about you, Charlie? You say it, right? Yeah, your actions say it, right? Your actions say that you love them, 
right? And those are all really good answers. The hugs, the kisses, the saying the words, doing acts of service so people know that, that, that they're loved and all that kind of stuff. And, and as Ube, I kind of talked about that, and I also shared with Ube that I had an experience yesterday. Now, I've had to go to the Mayo Clinic a lot this past week for a whole bunch of tests. I'm really, really good, by the way. But yesterday, I had a nice visit with a, with a nurse who came out and got me in the waiting room, and she looked at me and she said, Mr. Doring, how are you doing today? I'm like, I'm pretty good. How are you doing? And she said, I'm not doing good at all. And I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there anything that I can do for you? And she thought about it, and she's like, well, I don't know what you could do for me. And I said, well, I could sing you a song. And she said, you wouldn't sing me a song. So I started to sing her a song as we were walking down the hallway at Mayo Clinic. Yeah, lots of people are giving me the same look that you're giving me, Jenna. So I totally busted out a song. And her face just, she started beaming and was so happy. Um, and then we went back and I met with the doctor. And as we came back out, we ran into that same nurse. And Karen was with me, and she's like, you just made my day. What do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a pastor. And she's like, you know what? There was something about you that I just knew that that was, that was what you were going to say, right? Now, what's interesting about that story is that, sure, I'm a pastor, right? But I really showed love to this woman by, just by singing her a silly little song. It was blue skies smiling at me, nothing but blue skies do I see. That was the song I sang, right? And I think that's the way that Jesus wants us to share love with other people. If they're having a hard time, if they're struggling, something's going on, just do something nice for them. It's not that hard, right? It's not that hard. You can do it, right? So here's my challenge. These next few days, my guess, are going to be kind of hectic in your houses and maybe with your parents, okay? One of the things that I wish I could do that I can no longer do is just look at my parents and say, thank you for everything that you do for me. I love you so much. What can I do to help you out? I can't do that anymore because my parents aren't here, but you have that opportunity. So my challenge for you is in the next few days, I want you to figure out a way to show your parents that you love them by doing an act of service. Now, what's special about this is that I have special surprises on Easter Sunday for people who do this promise. I'm going to trust you that you actually did it, which is more pressure because you can't lie to the guy in the funny shirt. That's pretty bad, right? All right, so we're going to say a prayer, and we're also going to say a prayer that these folk out here also show love to one another. Okay, so can you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Make us bringers of this love to our family, to our friends, and to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, you can go back to your seats. Now, don't lie to me on Sunday. Because I'll make me up, it'll make me really sad on Easter Sunday if you lie to me. God makes peace within us. God makes peace between us. The peace of God is here to stay. I invite you to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another. You can get up and like actually shake hands if you want to.
Uh, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, just on a side note, uh, my lovely wife, whom I love very much, even likes to dig on me on Facebook. There were some questions about sound, and Karen had to just say that I sing twice as loud as I actually talk on the Facebook chat. So if you believe that's true, give me a round of applause. If I sing louder than I... Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, sliders up and down. Okay, so I'll try to talk at a consistent level. Okay? This is one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, and I know I say that all about all these whole highly religious holidays, but, but this night has special meaning for me. And it has special meaning for me uh, because I get to do an act of service uh, for this community of faith. Now, I do lots of ministry with you. We do lots of ministry together. But tonight, I get to do a ministry for you uh, when you come forward and have your hands washed. Now, it's kind of creepy and kind of different. I'm really grateful that we don't do feet washing because feet kind of creep me out. But I really appreciate that moment of connection, that opportunity uh, for me to live into Jesus' command to love uh, another. And we need to talk about that command really quickly. Because I was hopeful, uh, even though I planned for the Bible translation that we use tonight, uh, that's what I put into the planner and that's what ended up in, in, in uh, our service tonight, I was really hoping that by some divine providence I had used a different translation of the Bible. And it's because of that one verse, Jesus gives us a new commandment to love one another. And I wish I would have picked a different version of the Bible. Because if you look at the Greek, which some of us actually do on occasion, two weeks in a row, my Greek professor would be really, really happy. If you look at the Greek, that word new doesn't mean something brand new. That word really means something like renewed. And that verse has so many different implications. For the history of Christianity, if you understand that that Greek word is renewed, I give you a renewed commandment to love one another. And why does that make any difference? Well, Jesus was brought to earth. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus did ministry, did all this stuff because people forgot to love one another. It's one of the oldest commandments in Scripture. To express this love of God towards love, in love towards one another. It was the point of Jesus' ministry. It's why Jesus healed the sick. It's why Jesus ate with the outcasts. It's why Jesus did everything that Jesus did. It was to remind people of this renewed commandment that they are to love one another. And now when you think about this commandment, this renewed commandment of love, it can seem pretty daunting, right? Because to love someone means that maybe you have to step out of a comfort zone. Maybe you have to interact with someone that you really don't get along with. Maybe you have to, to, to pull up your big, big boy or big girl pants and and admit that you've done something wrong and try to reconcile with someone because that's an expression of love. Maybe love means that you just have to be a little bit uncomfortable and do some uncomfortable things, like coming to the front of a room filled with people to have your hands washed. You see, love is not only this romantic ideal that gets lifted up in in really bad movies, or it's not like I, I, I really like tacos, and sometimes I say I love tacos, but it's not that kind of love we're talking about. It's love that, that transforms. It's love that makes a difference. It's love that, that propels us to do something different and something better and, and to achieve a different ideal than the ideal that we're living in. And that's the commandment that Jesus gives us tonight, to be vessels of this kind of transformative love, to be vessels of this love towards one another and to those whom we don't even know. 
and most important, Jesus gives us this renewed command to express love to those whom we don't think are worthy of our love. Because if you think about the story, sure, there's the author of the Gospel of John. John makes a big point to to, to tell us who Judas is, that he already has in his heart and his mind that he's going to betray Jesus. But do you notice what happens in the story? Does Jesus look at Judas and say, you're unworthy of this gift of love? I know that you're going to hurt me. I know that you're going to betray me. I know that I'm going to die because of you. So get out of here. Does Jesus say that? Not at all. What does Jesus do? He shows love. That's the high calling of us who claim to follow Jesus. To love everyone, no matter how difficult we deem them to love. And the secret is that sometimes we deem ourselves the most difficult people to love. So that commandment to love one another also includes the idea that you have to love yourself. That you have to be resilient. That you have to claim that identity. That identity as a beloved child of God. So hard, but so transformative. So siblings in Christ, as we continue on this journey of faith together, as we continue to live as God's beloved children, let us be very willing to give the gift of love to one another, to the world, to those whom we think aren't worthy of love, and to ourselves. And let us celebrate tangible examples of love. Whether that's washing our hands together or eating at the table together in this meal of love. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's a kind act of of opening the door for someone or a simple act of service. All those signs of love really matter. So let's be love bringers. Let's uh, proclaim love from the mountaintops. And let us be very willing to share that love with everyone else. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to our live stream camera so you can see. Okay, cool. Awesome. So we're going to continue our worship service with our hand washing ceremony. I'm gonna give you a, a few uh, things of instruction about how to come forward. So you can come forward anytime that you want if you're comfortable coming forward. If you're not com comfortable coming forward, that's quite all right too. Um, so you'll just come forward uh, and you'll place your hands over uh, this plastic um, container here. I'll wash your hands and then you can grab one of these towels and dry your hands, okay? Now, um, I've been using these towels when we have baptisms here at People of Hope as, as, as kind of a reminder and a connection of this event and love and to those baptismal families. But because I've done that, I haven't replaced the ones that I've used. So I'm going to ask that you use one towel per family unit, okay? So uh, I'm going to get your hands wet. Uh, so you want to be the first person to use the towel. Let's get real about that, okay? So we'll wash your hands and we'll do that bit. If you're a little bit uh, challenged vertically, there's a step stool right down here. Um, most of you will be able to reach your hands over this without having to use that step stool. Someone might need to. Uh, if someone is using the step stool, I'm gonna ask people to help them up and down off the step stool so there's no slippage. The table is high to save pain on my back. All right, so uh, Ted's going to play music as we do this. If you're at home, please know uh, that we love you here at People of Hope. We're so grateful that you've joined us for worship. I wish I could come to your house and wash your hands, uh, but uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to tonight. Uh, but you can wash your own hands and, and, and you can pretend that that's kind of weird too. Uh, just know that as you wash your hands, God is expressing God's love to you through that simple act. All right, so I'm going to invite anyone who's, who's comfortable coming forward first. I'm going to actually suggest that the Morrissey family come forward first because uh, they're going to help me with some stuff here. Uh, and then you can just kind of file up as you would like to file up.
I invite you to please affirm our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, I'm going to talk as I walk down the center aisle. Again, I thank you for all the gifts that you bring to this community of faith. Uh, the gift of your time, your talents, uh, your treasures. Uh, you make the ministry that we share together here possible. Um, and I continue to be blessed uh, by the ministry that you provide here. And I know that the community of Rochester is also blessed by your involvement here. So thank you for everything that you do, for everything that you are, uh, and for everything that you proclaim in the world. Uh, we're going to continue with the prayers of the church. So I'm going to end every prayer petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. If you're joining us online, you can hit one of the little emojis on the Facebook live chat if you want to participate in a response to the prayers. So again, I invite you um, to please pray with me. Most holy and gracious God, I thank you for this night of, of grace. I thank you for bringing us together here to dwell in your love for just a few moments. And God, I ask that you continue to work ways in our lives where we can recognize your love uh, through our, our interactions with each other, our interactions with other members of the community, with, it, through interactions with strangers that we meet on the street. God, continue to remind us of your love and use us to be vessels of your love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for uh, a, uh, a niece of, uh, of someone gathered here this evening who is struggling with an eating disorder. Uh, continue to watch over uh, this young woman and help her to overcome uh, the challenges that she faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for Shanda Gale and for Sherry Cavanaugh and for Daryl Wexel and for anything that's, that's going on in their lives. Uh, continue to watch over them, God. Continue to remind them uh, that they are loved and continue to bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for uh, Derek, who lost his mother suddenly last week. Free, please use us to provide comfort and care uh, to Derek's family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for all those who are uh, suffering uh, from the effects of COVID. And we pray uh, especially for members of our community of faith who are on the uh, pathway of recovery. Uh, continue to be with them uh, and continue to bring them back to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for the people of Ukraine uh, as they suffer uh, due to uh, violence in their country. Uh, we ask that you continue to keep them safe. And we ask that your, your, um, your ideal of peace uh, be brought uh, to that region of our world and throughout our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are going to continue uh, with communion, uh, with our communion liturgy. Um, so I play the role of pastor, you play the role of people. Uh, I see that my first line is cut off, but it's a good thing that I have it memorized. So, people of God, people of life. We gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a ta table with a ragged collection of people. Outcasts, betrayers, the power hungry, the fragile, the lonely, the lost. 
The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to the table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will commune by moving from the back of the worship space to the front down the center aisle. There'll be one station for bread, so you'll come and see me then there'll be wine on either side of, of me. Um, so I invite you to pick up a communion cup, receive the bread, receive the wine, dispose of our used communion cups in the baskets off to the side. I'm going to ask you uh, to use hand sanitizer as you come forward too. So stop at that hand sanitizing station, sanitize up, do that. And then there's sanitizers on, by the sidewalls as well. Uh, if you prefer to have communion with grape juice rather than wine, we have that option available for you as well. You'll simply go to the server uh, that has the chalice with the red ribbon tied around the bottom. We will also have gluten-free bread uh, this evening, so if you need that, just indicate that to me, and I'll make sure that you get uh, a gluten-free uh, bread as well. So again, everything is set. Uh, I invite our communion assistants to make their way forward.
and the first thing to hear is the light of a rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new and true song, thrill me the old, old story as I have loved so long. I love to tell the story. Thrill me my Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. Uh, this is the second time that we've done communion uh, after the pandemic with folks coming up front. And I need to adjust the flow of the hand sanitizer I'm discovering now. So I will address that before, uh, but know that you're really, really clean <laughs> as you leave uh, this evening. Uh, just a few announcements first. Uh, don't forget that our crosswalk is happening tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. That's going to be held outside. So if you're going to be a part of that outside crosswalk, you're going to want to put on some warm clothing. Um, you know, a hat would be okay. Gloves would be okay. Uh, shoes that can get a little muddy would be okay. Uh, we'll do that around our property. Uh, for those who don't want to walk around our property, there will also be an indoor version of that crosswalk that will happen. Uh, that indoor version is going to happen in the gathering space. So be prepared uh, for that if you want to participate in that way. If you're at home and aren't comfortable coming to People of Hope, that crosswalk, uh, at least the video of the crosswalk that we did last year, that virtual version of our crosswalk, will be available both on Facebook and at, on YouTube at 8 a.m. And it's just going to stay on there. So you can access it any time tomorrow as well. So uh, I encourage you to participate in that crosswalk. Then on Saturday, we have our community-wide Easter egg hunt. That hunt is going to begin at 10 a.m., but our work starts a little bit earlier than that. So if you're willing to come on Saturday morning uh, to help hide eggs, and quite literally hiding eggs here at People of Hope is putting your hand in a big bin of eggs and putting them on the ground. Uh, we could use your help at about 9 o'clock or so. Uh, hopefully we'll get a good turnout. Hopefully the weather won't deter anyone. A few years ago we did it when there was like, I don't know, four inches of snow on the ground. So at least we don't have snow. Be a little chilly, but it's going to be a beautiful day on Saturday, so I encourage you to come and be a part of that if you are able. Then we have one worship service on Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. So love to see you here in person for that worship service or on Facebook. That would be great. Uh, there is no learning time uh, after that service. There will be some coffee and treats available after that service, though, so uh, know that that's going to happen, but we'd love to see you here uh, for that worship service as well. Uh, tonight, we are going to end our service a little differently. I'm going to ask for your help. Uh, if you're willing and able, we are going to strip our worship space. So uh, when the song, The Old Rugged Cross, starts, I'm going to invite you, if you're willing and able and, and, and can do it safely, to come up and grab something from up here and simply place it on one of the tables in the gathering area. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to ask that you do not remove is the purple banner uh, because it's held up there. Uh, I, I just don't, we don't want to rip it is what I'm, I'm going to get uh, to say. So uh, we could use your help to do that. Uh, I'll be singing the old rugged cross for you as you uh, do this work. So I'm going to grab my music and get out of your way. Uh, and then I just invite you to come forward uh, as you are able. Yes. Candles too. Be careful, though. 
Um, is there a blessing slide after this? Yes, so we're going to go ahead and do the blessing, and then we'll start this process. So Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross and exchange it someday.